InnerQuest explores various pathways through which you can connect with the infinite wisdom of the universe and apply it to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. This program, featuring accomplished practitioners, educators, and authors, is provided by Infinity Foundation, an innovative center for holistic studies and research. We invite you to share this journey with us. Welcome to InterQuest. My name is Jay Stone, your host for today, and our guest is Bill Farber. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Jay. Let me tell you a little bit about Bill. Bill is the founder of Life Energy Alignment Program. And if you take those words together and just the first letter, it's an acronym for LEAP. It is. All right. And we're going to find out more about leaping, uh, growing by leaps and bounds, and healing in leaps and bounds. Right. Over the last 22 years, Bill has performed thousands of energy healing sessions for people in all parts of the world. Bill works both in person and remote, remotely. Bill is also a Northbrook resident, attorney, and a principal in a prominent title insurance agency. Mm -hmm. Bill's a resident of Northbrook. He is married to his wife, Rona, for over 40 years and has two adult children. Let's give a shout out to Brandon and Tiffany. Mm -hmm. um, well, Bill, why don't you tell our audience how you first became interested in energy heal healing? Well, it was kind of a process for me. I, I became interested uh, back in around 1971 when I was just beginning law school. I was introduced to meditation. My sister met some guy in the L and told her about it. And when she told me about it, I thought, wow, this, is, this sounds like something I'd like to do. I had no previous interest in it at all, but it kind of like resonated. So I was learned... Was any particular style? It was uh, TM. Okay, yeah, which many big people in the learned, 70s. Very yeah. big. And um, with me, the, the experience I had with that was so immediate and transformative. I mean, I felt completely different mm -hmm. almost immediately. Okay. Now, um, you're, would you call the work you're doing energy healing? Yes, um, but the word healing is kind of with quotation marks because, first of all, I don't claim to heal people directly. What happens is the energy connects with the person through me as a conduit. The conduit would probably be the best word. And the energy itself will amplify the, the body's healing mechanism. The body already heals itself. Yeah. There's a healing process that's already innate, inherent in the, in, in the body. But the energy, when the energy, this type of energy has a high vibration, a high frequency. So when the energy connects, it amplifies and it speeds up the healing process. Now, uh, is, is there a simple way to define or describe energy healing for our audience? Energy healing is such a vast, vast area. It goes, uh, you know, you could say that even acupuncture is energy healing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different touch therapies that are energy healing. So I guess you would say that, you know, energy healing probably deals with a less definable and maybe a little bit more hidden aspect of healing compared to our Western medicine, which is basically involved with physiological, you know, surgery or pharmaceuticals, which definitely has its Something place. you could measure. Measurable. By a blood test right. or medical device, right. et cetera. But of course there is uh, energy medicine now, which is a, a, a fast and growing field that there's a lot of medical research done. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Oz said that energy medicine is the medicine of the future, and I, I agree with him completely. Right, well, um, since we're on the topic of energy medicine, energy healing, why don't you talk a little bit about, because about prevention, how, like, do you feel like because of your uh, awareness of energy and energy practice, you've actually had less disease than, say, people your age? Um, so talk a little bit about prevention. As far as working on oneself? Working on oneself or having an energy practice. Well, as I say, as you mentioned before, my energy practice is not my full-time job. Yeah. And it's, a f it's, it's an incredible enriching experience to have this as a, a prominent part of my life. And I find that it, the nice thing about the type of energy work I do is the energy kind of comes through me in a, and it's a conduit. And, it, and as it's coming through me, it's kind of working on me at the same time. Because mm -hmm. it's raising, it's, it's balancing me out so I can be the purest possible conduit for the energy. Yeah. So I can do this for eight or nine hours in a day. And at the end of the day, I'm just, I feel fantastic. It's right. kind of drained. 
Like maybe after nine hours doing well, mas <laughs> massage therapists say, you know, when you give a massage, you get a massage. So if you give an energy healing, you you get an energy healing. Now during your day your day job as a right. as a lawyer, right, as a, an executive, um, are, are, do you take any time out during the day uh, to do energy work? Or I healing? do, I do. Yeah, but it's it's more of a gorilla type of situation. Emergencies come up. Yeah, maybe someone in the office will need help. I get a lot of phone calls from people that need help here or there. Uh, and I do use it during the day just to kind of amplify my activity, clarify things. Because the energy can be used not just on people, but on situations mm -hmm. to empower a goal, for example. Well, can you talk a little bit about that? Like sure. energy healing, you know, in the workplace. Since well, <laughs> you're, right. you're in a traditional work environment. Right, right, right. Well, one of my missions is to introduce energy work into more and more of a corporate or organizational environment. Because if, if people are participating in this, even a few key core people could change the whole energy of a company very, very quickly in a very positive way. And it's a different kind of a, an approach than most of the behavioral approaches to management. Well, how, how is it possible for one or two people to change, uh, you know, a, a, a mid-size or a large corporation? Well, a large corporation, you probably need more than one or two. Okay. But say you, you, you need a small, coherent group, like a, a core group. Well, there's been a lot of research over the decades about meditation. Mm -hmm. When there's a certain number or percentage of people me uh, practicing meditation in, a, in an area, it radiates out and it produces a coherence in the consciousness of the public. Right. I've, I've heard about like prayer groups that similar to pr that. pray to reduce the crime and, right, and, and meditation crime. groups uh, that get together and, and have larger numbers of people. So I think that in a situation of a company, if you had a few key people that were practicing energy work in a certain way, that it would radiate out. It only takes one person with a really negative attitude to kind of pollute an organization. Yeah. Well, at the same way, someone who's completely balanced and coherent can radiate a positive effect. And if you have a few people working together in a concerted way, in a, in a harmonious way, it would, I, would, I believe it would send ripples of, of calmness and clarity that would go to people that didn't even practice the energy work. Well, I, I you know, uh, can imagine, let's say, like some uh, uh, corporations, companies are ha having people come in and do like yoga classes right what and yoga deals with prana which is a form of vital energy life right. force right um, and I could just imagine like having like a quiet room where employees can meditate or do s some type of other uh, type uh, type of energy work that would be phenomenal I think there are companies more companies adopting that now and I think that when they research it with the quote-unquote wellness programs that incorporate this kind of thing it's dr it's, it's dramatic uh, that you know the absentee rate will drop, the uh, productivity will go up, error rate will go down. Uh, it should. Yeah. I, what I find when I do this energy work is it, it produces a profound state of quiet in people, quiet mm -hmm. and peace. And the interesting thing is they don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. and they don't have to even believe in it, or or have any experience pre-existing experience. Mm -hmm. It's just something peculiar, miraculous about it. You could say that produces that. Okay. And. Um, well, you look like you're in good shape. Are you doing anything else besides the energy work to keep yourself <laughs> fit and healthy? Thanks. Um, well, I exercise every day. Mm -hmm. uh, any, part any particular type of exercise? Well, nothing too esoteric. I have a rebounder. Okay. And uh, I go to Bally's two or three days a week with my son. Uh huh. And um, I, uh, you know, but I, I don't work out maybe 45 minutes. I don't have a long, strenuous workout. It's kind of a maintenance thing. Yeah. And with the food, I, I really not as good as I should be with the food, although I, I do, I well, am careful with it. Food, food has energy, too. Yes. Right. Do you ever send energy to yes. food? Yes, yes. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, anything that lives will absorb energy. Mm -hmm. And anything and it can give off energy. And give off energy. Right. So this type of energy, you know, I do a lot of work with people, but also animals. Mm -hmm. And when the energy connects with something, it raises up the vibration of that thing, of that substance, including mm -hmm. food. What, what kind of animals do you work on? 